This is Tony Brew Ministries welcoming you for the old-time preaching from God's Anointed Word. Here's a message entitled, Identify Yourself. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, says the psalmist. As a little child, I remember being in the center room of our house. There was a small television on the right side, up on top of a little dresser, and music came out of it. And all of a sudden, the music stopped, and the announcer said probably three or four times, it sounded like a hundred, President Kennedy has just been shot. President Kennedy has just been shot. Our nation, after that, was in a place of not really knowing what our identity was. Sometimes we lose our identity, or at least people think we do. But America is strong, and we made it through. I don't remember much of the aftermath of that right away, but it wasn't long until my family knew that I had to go to school, and it wasn't a traditional school. It was a state school for the blind in South Carolina. So, not many months later, I was sent off to school. They took me to school some 75 miles away from my home, and they would come for me on the weekend. It was an awful time to be away from your family. And there's too many things to talk about now to try to get used to. We would say, I don't like it here. I don't like the way you do things. I don't like getting up and revelry at 6 o'clock. I don't like chow at 8 o'clock. I don't like this and that. They never told us, go back home or go where you came from. There was an important clause that they put in there. They said, if you don't like the way we do things here, you go back home. We're here to give you an education. What you don't realize is you're in a sighted man's world. And if you're going to make it in a sighted man's world, you're going to have to have some discipline. You're going to have to have some education. You're going to have to have some identity where you can identify yourself. It's not much and enough just to say, I'm a blind boy. I'm a blind girl. I'm a deaf girl. We had an aphasic department, which means that they were mentally challenged. It's not enough just to say, I have a problem. You have to identify yourself and overcome that problem. You cannot allow that problem to keep you in darkness, to keep you in a certain way. You can identify yourself and come over that problem. You do not have to allow that problem to dictate and dominate who your identity is. Identify yourself. That's what the girl on the commercial says. This is security. Identify yourself. And I'm thinking they surely could have picked another voice besides this little girl saying, This is security. Identify yourself. Police has just been dispatched. Now, you put the silverware back where you got it, and you put the jewelry back in its place. <laughs> now, I understand now that men and women want to do a lot of the same thing, but they need to get a grizzly guy saying, Hey, boy, put your hands up. <laughs> Identify yourself. It does make a little difference. We can actually decide our identity. Decide your identity. Two guys got together, hadn't seen each other a long time, and he said, how in the world are you doing? He said, I'm doing all right, man. How's it going? Oh, great. Well, how's your wife? Oh, she's an angel. Oh, really? Well, mine's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think somebody got their identity mixed up, don't you? Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23 to 27, there was a situation there. Scripture talks about identity. It sometimes gets lost in the shuffle of things. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod and Ammon and of Moab, 
And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. They had lost their identity. It was not the children's fault. It was the people who were responsible for them because they had gotten so mixed up that they had lost their identity. The children didn't know whether to speak Hebrew or Shebrew. They didn't know what to speak. They didn't know they spoke half in the language of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language. They were mixed up. And people nowadays, they don't know whether to speak Italian, they don't know whether to speak French or Spanish or English. It's not like the Apostle Paul who was so brilliant he could speak several languages. We can't even master English, and I'm not sure sometimes whether to call it English or English. <laughs> But it's a hard language to master, so instead of mastering it, you just muddle through it and get through the best way you can. The prophet continues and said, I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair. He didn't have much to work with me, I know. That. <laughs> and made them swear by God, which is not a good thing to do now, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. And here's a perfect example of what it will cause when you get involved in people and just try to throw everything together and hope everything will just work out. That's a big thing that Pentecostals do now. We just put it all together. And it's like when you went to state school and one thing they did was they had rice and they had gravy and they had peas. And some of the guys out did the idea that you just throw everything together and make a goulash out of everything and hope it all works out. Well, that's the way that people think you can do now. You just throw it all together and hope it all works out. It's not going to work out because you got to have Jesus driving the boat and flying the airplane and he's going to make everything work out. Amen. You can't just mix all religions together and mix everything together and hope it'll all work out. Jesus can bring you out. He can make something out of your mess. He can make goodness out of your mess. And it doesn't matter what kind of color you are. It doesn't matter where you came from. And the book of the Revelation said, From every tribe and nation and tongue, we're all sons and daughters of the Most High God. So it doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter all of that. What matters is, is Jesus your Lord. And the problem they had here was not necessarily the people. God told everyone, Israel to stay with yourself and to stay with your kind. And the reason he told them that was because of the false gods. These people will draw you away from Elohim, from Jehovah, and they will cause you to worship false gods. And the example here is given of Solomon. Even did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things. Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to tread and stress against God in marrying strange wives? This is an example. Solomon, though he was the wisest man on earth at that time, he did not even get out of the trap that was set for him. And the evil one knows what kind of trap to set for you. And that would be the trap that would bring Solomon down. It would not be silver and gold. That would not cause him to sin. And he had a lot of it. It would not be the horses. It would not be the chariots. What caused him to sin was the problem of these foreign women who worship strange gods and they were brought into his life. They were brought into Jerusalem and they ended up leading the nation into idolatry because of it. Now you cannot help where you came from, but you can decide who you are and where you're going. You can decide your identity. Preachers have said we can decide our destiny. We can do more than decide our destiny. We can decide our identity. That is, we can decide whether we're on the Lord's side or not. We can decide how we're going to live. We can decide how we're going to conduct our life. We can decide our identity. God told Israel, you are to have no other gods before me. I am to be your God. And there is none other. And you can decide either to do that or you can have a whole lot of trouble. And they 
decided to have a whole lot of trouble, but God wants us to decide our identity. Your identity is not determined by whether you can see or whether you cannot see or whether you can hear or whether you cannot hear. Your identity is not determined by that. You can determine your identity. In Romans chapter 2 verse 28 and 29, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is the, that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And so state school goes on for a while. And in that time, we had devotion in state school. We had devotion every day. Lord have mercy. We pledged allegiance to the flag. And it was a flag of the United States of America, by the way. That's the flag that we honored, and that's the flag that we pledged to every day. And sometimes in the mid-1960s, they integrated the schools. And so these different kind of dudes started showing up that we didn't know was around. They were there all the time, but we didn't really know it. And so when you hear me talk about white, or you hear me talk about black, or you hear me jive a little bit, you may become uncomfortable with that. And the Spirit says to me that some of you perhaps are uncomfortable with that. The fact is, I'm comfortable with it because we bunk together, we live together, we ate together, and we spent time together, and I don't have a problem. I love crackers, by the way, and I love crackers with peanut butter on them. It makes a whole lot better eating. <laughs> I don't have problems with white, I don't have problems with black, because in a blind man's world it don't matter whether it be black, whether it be white, or whatever it is. The only thing that's good about a blind man's world is at least you can have a little daylight be light rather than darkness. So, when these people started showing up, I noticed that their head felt funny. Head felt like a bird, and the feet stank. But we didn't have no problems being together. All bumped together, I don't know, 12, 16, 18 of us. Didn't matter. You can get along. Because all of us had the same identity. That is, we had to get through somehow. And we had the same goal. That is, we're going to make the best of what we got. We're going to get an education. We're going to learn how to do something. We're going to learn how to make something out of our life. And lo and behold, in 1971, I gave my heart to Jesus. And a few months after that, I realized that God was dealing me about getting into gospel ministry. And I said, Lord, have mercy. I can't even read. Can't read a Bible. Don't have a Bible. And I didn't know what in the world to do. But you can determine your identity rather than letting circumstances around you determine who you are and what you're going to be. I realize that, as Paul said here, you're not a Jew just because you look like one on the outside. But you can determine your identity. So you go on, and then I had this thing about after many years coming to Henderson, North Carolina. And I realized that when I came to Henderson that there were people, some more people that were different. They spoke a different language than I did. And I had this thing, I said, well, you know, I've got to learn their language where I can talk to them about Jesus. And so I began to study the Spanish language and I began to talk to them about the Lord. And some of them came to the Lord and we had some Bible studies together and Sunday school together and I was helping out in this church that I'd come here to help out in the mission status of a free will Baptist church. And so I had been teaching Bible in Spanish for 30, 45 minutes. And I get up in the church, and the, in the main church, and the preacher says, Brother Tony, will you lead us in prayer? Well, immediately I jumped up and started praying, but it didn't come out in English. It came out in Spanish. So you had someone in the Baptist church speaking in tongues in the Baptist church. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You can determine your identity. I said, I'm going to get me some tacos, I'm going to get me some burritos, I'm going to get me some Cheetos, but I don't like cheese, so I had to leave them out. And I'm going to eat me some Mexican food. And you know what? I ate the Mexican food, the jalapenos. 
I ate the Mexican food and I did all that, but you know what? I could eat it all day and it still didn't make me a Mexican or Spanish speaking person. I can speak Spanish somewhat, but that didn't change who I was on the inside. Because you can put burrito all over your face on the outside, that doesn't make you any different on the inside. It's not a Jew who looks like one outwardly. They thought they had it all together. But the Apostle Paul said, it's what you got on the inside that's what's going on and what counts. Chapter 9, verse 6, not as though the Word of God have taken none effect. It doesn't matter what I say I want to be or who I try to act like. It doesn't change the Word of God. For they are not all of Israel which are of Israel. They are not all Israel which are of Israel. You can be from Israel, but you may not have the Israeli heart. You can go over there to live. We've had people that say, I want to go over there. I want to identify myself. I want to study some Hebrew, which is the hardest thing you'll ever do, by the way. And I want to go over there and I want to do this and that. But that still doesn't give you that kind of heart. You can come to a place called America. You can come and you can try to have a better life, and that you should. If you come the right way and come in legally to seek the right way and to try to be in the right way, you ought to have all doors open for you and every avenue open for you and available to you to help you to be able to better yourself and to further your cause. But you've got to come the right way. You can come from anywhere you want to come. But that doesn't give you an American heart. You have to adapt the values that we have. You have to worship the God that made us the nation that we are. You can't worship just any old God. You can't honor just any old flag. You've got to honor the flag of the United States of America. You've got to be willing to pay taxes to Uncle Sam instead of Aunt Sally and Uncle George. You got to be willing to do what you're supposed to do here. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Abraham had a lot of children. A little course of children sing. Abraham had many sons, many sons had Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. And then they'd sing it again. They'd put their right hand up, and then they'd put their left hand up. Then they'd go on the right leg, and then they'd go on the left leg, and they're going to fall down and knock their nog noggin on the floor. And finally, the last verse says, turn around, sit down. I always like that part. <laughs> but the gist of the song was, Abraham had many sons. I am one of them, and so are you. That's true spiritually, but the fact is, he had a lot of sons, but they were not all the children of promise. Those who were of Isaac are the children of promise, and they're called the seed. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. This world, nor even our modern culture, must not determine our identity, our relationship with Jesus Christ, and faith in God will. Amen. That determines who you are. That determines what you are. Your relationship with God and your faith in Jesus Christ. That says who you are. It doesn't even matter if you're Baptist or Pentecostal or Methodist. People say, I was born into this. I was born into it. Let me tell you what else you were born into. You were born as a little cotton-picking sinner. That's what you were born as. And we all had to come to that same place. None of us are better than another. Just because you have been born into a Christian home, thank God for that, you have opportunities that many people do not have. And it's something to pride yourself in the right way that you've been born into a Christian home, that you have a good godly upbringing. That's a wonderful thing. But that doesn't make you better than old Joe down on the block. It doesn't make you better than old Jill over the hill. It doesn't make you better than anyone else. We're all sinners in God's sight in need of a Savior. And then when Jesus comes into your heart, you're not a sinner anymore. You're not a sinner saved by grace. You're a sinner and you're saved... So then, when you're a sinner and you become saved, you're not a sinner anymore. You're saved by grace and you don't have to sin anymore. 
Declare your identity. Galatians 3, 7. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. We do not declare our identity by the color of our skin or how loud our mouth is, but by the faith which identifies us with the family of God and the blessings which he bestows upon us by being spiritual sons and daughters of Abraham. That tells you who you are and where you're going. God tells the women in 1 Peter chapter 3, You are daughters of Abraham if you do not be afraid with any amazement. Don't allow the girls in town to dictate your identity. You can determine and declare your identity because of who you are in Jesus Christ. Because of your relationship with Him. It doesn't matter whether you use cover girl. It doesn't matter whether you use Estee Lauder. It doesn't matter whether you use Barbara Soul. <laughs> None of that matters. What matters is, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you have a relationship with the living Lord? Have you decided what your identity is going to be? Have you determined your identity? And are you declaring your identity? A lot of people on the TV now, oh, they're declaring a lot of things. They're declaring hate, they're declaring violence, they're declaring division, they're declaring strife. And another thing the Lord showed me too, it's all right to watch the news. But some of our people are getting too involved in Fox and NBC and CBS and ABC and all these other C's, watching too much news. Do you know that if you watch too much news or too much social media or if you eat too much chocolate or if you drink too much drinks or if you eat too many tater chips or if you do too much of anything too much, there's a danger in it. There's even a danger in too much religion. Hello. There's not too much Jesus. But you can have too much religion. You can have too much Pentecostalism. You can have too much church. You can become so churchified that you judge everybody else who don't do like you do. Well, it's time that we declare our identity, but we don't have to push ourselves over on nobody else because we don't have anything that nobody else can have. Because what we have is not a what, but a who. We have Jesus Christ. Amen. And what we have in Him, anybody else can have. We identify ourselves with Him. It's not a Jew which is one outwardly. It's not that circumcision in the flesh. They had to do that to show that they were part of the Abrahamic covenant. But God says through the Apostle Paul, it's not circumcision, it's not uncircumcision, but a new creature in Amen. Jesus Christ. That's what's important. And we know Him. And we identify ourselves with Him. And that way, when you get to heaven and you stand before the Lord, you'll be there with the Baptists, with the Methodists, with all the people who are born again. And it doesn't matter what kind of name it is. Because if you go to hell, the name's going to burn off. If you go to heaven, the name's going to fall off. So it doesn't matter either way. You got it made in the shade because you have identified yourself. Father, thank you so much that we can identify ourselves with you. Thank you for this word. Lord, I've said this word has just got to be for me. Nobody else needs to hear it. And you said, no, you've got to share it with God's people because we have to identify ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that we know you, that we can identify ourselves with you because you came and identified yourself with us. You didn't have to come at all, but you did. And we mistreated you. We spat upon you. We did all those evil things to you. We put you on an old rugged cross. And we denied your name. But you identified us with us. And you loved us anyway. And we thank you, Lord, for making a difference in our life. Thank you, Lord, that we are sons and daughters of Abraham. Because we're sons and daughters of the Most High God. And in Abraham, all nations of the earth are blessed. Because they're blessed because of you. You have blessed us and lifted us up in heavenly places. May your people be blessed today. Their families, 
Everything that they put their hand to may it be blessed. They're down sitting and uprising. They're coming in and going out. What they eat, what they drink, what they think about, what they touch. May everything we do be blessed because we bless it in your name, Jesus. Amen. You have been listening to the old time preaching from God's Word, a message entitled, Identify Yourself. Make sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and you know Him as your Lord today. You will, of course, identify yourself with Him. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.